<laughs> hey, we had a great week with you guys. Thanks for letting us be in here and working with the snowstorm and all that and jazz. So we were just so excited that we could be with you. I Hopefully you had a good week too. And um, good, get all the uh, stuff out of the way. Good luck next week at State. Girls. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else going on? Okay. Happy weekend. Um, happy Friday. You're not having a birthday, are you, Don? I'm not. Nope. You quit Never having again. them, right? I'm not having any more of those. No more birthdays I've for Dawn. So don't bring it up. Uh, wonderful. So let's stand up and stretch. It just feels good. There it is. Maybe put your hand on your hip and go like that. <laughs> Possibly go like this. If you're really feeling dangerous, uh, reach down and touch your knees. Woo, feel the burn, feel the burn. <laughs> All right, do this with me. Say, in you. In you. In you. In you. I find my peace. I find my peace. In you. In you. In you. In you. I find my strength. I find my strength. In you. In you. I live and move and breathe. And you're going to kind of just be a hang glider. And just if you happen to touch your neighbor on the shoulder, that's fine. Let everything I say and do be founded by my faith in you. I lift up holy hands. And you go like this. And you say, last line of the chorus is, let the praises ring. So I know you guys sing wonderfully. I've heard it. You had a great concert here last night, I'm sure. And people were just like, oh, my goodness. Our children are so wonderfully. They sing on pitch. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> so when you get to the last line of the chorus, you're going to say, let the praises ring. No singing aloud. So for the non-singers in the room who've been hidden in this room, it's your day to shine. Yeah, so we, uh, we encourage obnoxious, off-pitch, um, loud, noisy, let the praises ring, however you need to let it out, let it out, all right? So turn to your neighbor and say, I know you can be obnoxious, so bring it. Give it your all. I know you have a pitch that nobody has ever heard before. So dig deep and find it. You got one more chance. Here we go. Holy hands and I 
was that was horrible, which was good. Turn your neighbor and give him a high five or a fist bump or a hug or something. Well, we get, we're grateful we could be with you guys. Um, we get to go um, all over the place. We get to go to Pella Christian down in southern Iowa next weekend. Yeah. Um, but, um, and we get to mentor middle school and high school students who like to play with us. It didn't work this week, obviously, school's going on. But on the weekends, we take a lot of them with us to churches and other events. And in the summer, we do camps. So if you have any inspiring musicians that want to be worship leaders, you'd like to join Happy the Dog, reach out. You, know, you go to Facebook or go to the website, just message us, whatever. But um, we survive on donations, and you see this little promo thing here, that little pelican-looking thing. That's the Give app, and if you've got a smartphone and you'd like to be on the Happy the Dog donor team, all you got to do is download that app and put in your debit card or credit card information, whatever you got, and you could give us loose change. So, like, if you go and get a pop at the Casey's, and it'll round it up to, like, nearest dollar and that can go towards happy and keep us on the road going to the different schools and different churches and stuff that we help out if you want to do that great if god's leading you to do that thank you uh, otherwise let's keep worshiping So we 
hopefully it's been a, a just a good week to refocus and remember that even though we might be broken inside, I know I am, sometimes it's just a good reminder that kind of takes the, and you remind yourself, oh yes, I remember. He came for me and I got to let go of my junk. I got to be open about it. So I hope you had a good chance to come to the altar and do that this week and uh, we'll be encouraged today.
How's everybody doing today? Good. Come on, we're going to try that one more time. How's everybody doing today? Good. There we go. I see a couple of y'all see a little more smiles today. Yes, yesterday, some of y'all were kind of sad. But I see smiles today, so happy the dog must be doing a great job. <laughs> so my question for you today is, are you salty? <laughs> and some of you guys are probably like, what, what is John talking about? What does he mean? So I'm going to explain that in a few, okay? So have a seat, and we'll get going. So I'm not going to be before you long today because we got this thing called a time crunch, and I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So let's start it off with everybody saying, hi, John. Hi, John. Wow, that was really good. So my name is John. I'm your friend, <laughs> and I'm excited to be here. So um, I was going to bring my good buddy Gideon up, but I don't, I don't see him. Is he here? Where is he at? All right, so we're just going to bring Gideon to the stage. So everybody, let's give him a go, 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 go. Run, dude, run. We're saying go, like run. Come on, man. And I put him on the spot a little bit too. So if you just want to hop on this mic over here, and I don't know if you play piano too, maybe you can play a little something. All right, so hopefully you can read that. Yes. Hopefully. All right, do it. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavors, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and to be trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, verse 13 through 16. Woo! Give him some. Good job. Thank you. I like, this, I like the swag too, man. All right. So, are you salty? Because God has called us to a specific identity. In those verses that we just read, it sound, sounded like to me that he said that you are the salt of the earth. That you are a city on a hill that you are light, the light of the world. And if that is our identity... There's a few things in there that I really want to pinpoint today because I feel like that it is going to help you to become what God wants you to be, and that is discovering your true identity. So everybody up? You know we got to do the I am. Come on. <clears throat> now, this is my last time being here for right now, for this week, but if you guys want me to come back, you really got to bring it, okay? <clears throat> I said you really got to bring it, okay? Yeah. There we go. All right. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Give me a I am. I am. The future. Future. Have a seat. Thank you. Man, y'all good crowd today. Y'all make it easy. Make my job easy. Gets me hype. So there's three functions of salt. And you know, I know you guys are like, John, this is not a science seminar, dude. Why are you talking about salt and all that crazy stuff? So I want to talk to you about these because I feel like that when you understand what God has called us to be and some of the functions of salt that he has um, called us to operate in, you will start to understand that your life has purpose. You'll start to understand how God wants to use you at this day and time because guess what? You could have been born any other time. But how many of you know that God saves his fastest runners for last? We are here in this moment because God has saved his fastest runners for last. Only you can be in this moment in time. So let's get to it. Number one, salt the electrolyte. 
What electrolytes do is it helps the flow of electricity and water in and out of cells. I want you to lock arms with the person beside you. God has called us to be a connector. And when we embrace the identity of salt and being an electrolyte, we are able to connect with our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ so that the Holy Spirit can flow. How many of you guys know that the Holy Spirit is the motor? Somebody say it with me, the motor. motor. You can let each other go now. Next, God has called us to be salt, the preservative. How many of you know that there's some relationships that God has called you to restore? The one with your mom, the one with your dad. I'm hearing grandmother in my sphere right now. God has called you to be a preserver of that relationship. He has called you to be a a builder of those relationships and the people around you. Guess what? If we as Christians don't show up every day and be salty, what do you think the world is going to look like? It's a dark place. It's scary. It's lonely. It's like the way that this world is going to look when the Holy Spirit isn't here anymore. Next thing. Salt as the flavoring. You see, the thing that I noticed about Gideon as he was coming to the stage and when I met him is that he has a very contagious personality. When he steps into a room, the atmosphere changes, the atmosphere shifts. So my question for you is, are you salty? Because if this room was a bowl of soup, and every time you added salt, and the salt wasn't salty, it creates disappointment. I get disappointed when I see Christians that refuse to be salty, and they step into politics, and they refuse to be salty. And it's frustrating. Or they step into their schools and they refuse to be salty. Or they step into their families or they step into their friend groups and nothing changes. How many of you guys have ever had a really nice cut of a steak without salt on it? Without any seasoning? It tastes pretty bad. But when you add a little bit of that flavoring on there, a little bit of that seasoning to what God already has established here, that that steak tastes pretty good. You see, things won't change until you show up. You know, the public schools, I would hear people say, well, you know, and, uh, and they took Christianity out of schools and all this and all that. And I was praying about that. And the Lord said, well, John, (laughs) um, son, uh, you show up to school every day. So did they really take Christianity out of schools or are my people refusing to be salty? See, because I used to walk into school and I would take off my I Love Love Jesus t-shirt and I would go in and I would curse and chase all the girls and do all this and do all that and just be a totally different person who I was at youth group because I refused to be salty. And sometimes for the sake of popularity and fitting in and being liked and being loved by everybody, we refuse to be salty. Can anybody tell me what the verse is? And scripture said that will happen whenever you refuse to be salty. Anybody want to take a shot at it? Anybody? All right. Say Say it again. It'll be thrown out. And what? Trampled under the feet. See, when you aren't salty... What that verse is saying is, what purpose do you have as a Christian that refuses to be salty? And my encouragement for you today is that it's a simple flip of the switch. It's a simple shift in your paradigm. It's a a simple shift in the way 
that you see yourself. And that is why we're talking about identity this week. That is why it is so important for you as a Christian to understand what is living on the inside of you. And that's the Holy Spirit. You are the light. This whole entire week, I've um, presented some challenging messages to you guys, some things that I know some of you probably went home and wrote up some hate mail for me, and I'll, I'll gladly accept them all. I like hate mail. But you are the light. You are the change. You are the city that is sitting on a hill. And I'm going to tell you what happens whenever a light refuses to do what it is supposed to do. When you take a, a candle and you try to set it up under your bed to try to hide it, things catch on fire. And now instead of you feeling like that it was just you that it was affecting, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not letting my light shine. I'm not affecting anybody else. I'm just in my own lane. But really... When you take that light and you put it up under something, it catches the whole house on fire. And more people are hurt because of your decision. As I get ready to close today, I want to tell you a story. So I was in India working with the ministry called You Can Free Us. And what my job was in India was um, I would have all of these candies and gifts and presents because we were under the disguise of coming to give Christmas gifts. But I would go into brothels, and what a brothel is, it's a place where um, girls younger than a lot of you um, are forced to have sex with men that they don't even know. A lot of them have uh, liver problems because they force them to drink alcohol to numb the pain of the things that are going to happen to them that day. I had conversations with some of the young ladies that were having to have sex with men that they didn't even know 30 and 40 times a day. And in that moment, as I was walking into these brothels and, and were slipping these girls a small note with a number on it that they could call to where we could plan a rescue. Yeah, it's real 007 type stuff, for real. Where we could plan the rescue. And I looked in the eyes of some of them and they would just say, no, I don't, I don't want to go. And I will never forget this. One of the young ladies... that was finally rescued. Her track coach told her that he was going to take her to the big city of Bombay or the big city of Mumbai, and she was going to be a star. And so she went with this coach, not knowing that that was going to be the last time that she ever seen her family. Her coach takes her to Mumbai, and he drops her off, and he sells her to uh, a pimp, and at 13 years old, this girl who didn't know the language there in this city, she didn't know anybody. She was forced into prostitution. And she said one day, something spoke to her and said, run. And she didn't know God. She didn't know Jesus Christ, but she just said something on the inside of her was talking to her and telling her to run. So she ran. She ran as fast as she could. And the, pol and the police, as she was running to the police station, they embraced her with open arms to only sell her to another brothel for double. I cried the majority of the time I was there because I just couldn't believe some of the things that happen to other people in this world. And so as she was sold to another brothel, she said that the voice spoke to her again and said, run. And she ran. 
And this time, when the police called her, it was a Christian police officer in India. And so he gets on the phone and he calls her dad and he says, hey, um, your daughter, she's been here. She's um, somehow got into prostitution and you, you need to come and get her. But I have her here for you. Can you can you come and get her? And the dad says, sure. And he pulls up to pick up his daughter. She comes walking out. And he drives off 50 yards and he puts the car in park and he says, get out. You're a disgrace to this family. You're not going home. And she was all on her own again. And then a friend of mine, Sujo John, who was actually in the Twin Towers when, whenever they collapsed, and that was when he came to know who Jesus Christ is. Amazing story. He met this girl. And he brought her to their home that they help and they rescue these girls. And he brought her to, his, to their home. And she met Jesus Christ in an amazing way. And when I talked to her, she said, John, if I had to do all of that over again, every man that I've slept with, everything that I've done wrong, all of the alcohol, all of the drugs, if I had to do all of that again just to meet Jesus Christ, I would do it all over again. And that day, it changed my perspective. That day, I understood how important it is for me to be the light. Stand up. If there's any, um, any teachers or any um, administrators that are in here, I would like you guys to come and just spread out across the front right here. I want you students to look around, and you guys can face out. You can face that way. I want you to look around right now. Look at how many people that you have here that love you, and they care for you, and their hearts are going out for you. If you want to make that decision to be the light, if you want to make that decision to no longer be bland but to be salty, As Mr. Troy is playing, I want you to get out of your seat and come down and find one of these guys and pray with them. Because I, the I know the value of prayer. I know what it's done in my life. And it's this day that somebody in here is going to walk forward into the rest of your life. And you're going to be able to look back on this day and say, that was the day that I decided to be salty. Um, set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released the hurt the sick the poor at peace we lay down our lives for heaven's cause we are your church we Pray, revive this earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets 
set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere shield your kingdom here we pray you've had an opportunity to um to pray with somebody um you can just kind of figure out a way to keep that flow going a little bit but we, d we definitely want to make sure that we pray with everybody in here before you leave today um we have some few administrators over here that are available and i think some over here as well so this is your day guys this is your day God has some amazing things just for you, just for you, just for you. Unleash your kingdom's power, reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts you made us more much more than this awake the kingdom seed in us fill us with the strength and love of christ we are your church we are the hope on earth we want to thank you so much for allowing us to be here today and I just want to pray a prayer of blessing a prayer, a prayer of favor over everybody here today and um, I just hope that as you move forward with life that all the things that we talked about this week you'll be able to take them with you so repeat after me dear Lord, dear Lord. let's try that again dear Lord, dear Lord. we thank you for this day for this, for this opportunity to be salt, to be, salt. To, be light. to be light, go with us, go with us. Help, us. help us, teach us, us. grow us, grow us. To, do to do your work, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. let's try that again, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen, thanks guys.